it's Catlin, and today we're going to be doing a video to make this birdhouse. And this is a birdhouse I designed earlier this year. I have a thing about birdhouses. I have a large, well, not a large collection. I've got about 20 of them. Um, now I'm starting to design them in paper, and there will be several of them. This is the first one I've done. And I've done it out of paper, but I've done it to make it look like it could have been wood, quarter inch wood. So I just wanted to give it some dimension and some oomph. Even the hole there you can see looks like it's thicker than a piece of cardstock. So the side, the back I've modified slightly for this build. And uh, yeah, so what you're going to need from this is I'm doing this one here and I'm doing it with a pink base and a blue roof. And this is sort of a pinky beige, doesn't show really well, but it's not white. There's white for the sides and for the house part. And uh, I'll be doing another video that has different flowers that you can decorate the front with. So this is what we're going to start on. And we're going to start on our base. So what you're going to need is eight and a half by 11 cardstock or A4, I think it is over in Britain. Um, everything will fit in that piece. And I've used 110 pound. I haven't tried something lighter. This thing here is actually an index weight, maybe close to a 65 or an 80. But it's not going to see much wear and tear. You just need it sturdy enough that you can glue it. And we've supported a lot of the bases so that you can. So we're going to start with our first piece of base paper. As I said, I'm doing mine in pink this time. And we're going to use the piece that we've cut six by six. All you're going to need for this is a ruler. I'm going to put that upside down so you don't get the glare from it. I like, excuse me, I like using one of my perfect sixteenths for folding my folds because I'm using a lot of eighth folds in here. Pencil, eraser, scissors, phone folder, glue. Scoreboard is awesome to use, but it's optional. I've always marked my scoreboard on the one inch and the half inch marks just so if I'm working down here on the board and not lining up from the top I can follow my lines and you'll see why I do that later if you only do one line on it of a line that you normally score on like if you're making cards and you routinely score it at four and a half you know, or four and a quarter then just make the one mark on it but it is helpful to have one long line on your scoreboard even if you do it temporarily on pe with pencil for this make so that will be coming in. So we're going to start off with our base piece. And this is our top base. We're working on this piece here. It's got a two-step base. We're working on this one here. So you need your six by six piece. And we're going to score this with the, with the scoreboard or use a ruler. I'm going to say as if we're all using a scoreboard. I'm assuming that all the people in my group use a scoreboard. So yes, you're also going to need your scoring tool. I like using this double pointed scoring tool. And we're going to start off by scoring. And this is going to be very common all the way through here. We've used a half inch and a three quarter inch, a half inch and then a quarter inch around all the sides. So on our pink one here, we're going to score at half an inch. I always score twice, three quarters of an inch. Spin it around. Half inch, three quarters of an inch. Give it a spin. Half inch, three quarters of an inch. Last way, half inch, three quarters of an inch. Okay, put this away so you can use it. Now we need to make our flaps and our folds. So first we're going to take this, move this out of the way, and we're going to score it on the innermost line, which is going to be for our quarter inch. So we're going to do that all the way around. We still have a score there that we haven't scored on. But this is going to give us our stop line. 
so that we all know what we're doing. Okay. So on two sides, you want to cut in on your score mark here, right up to the corner. And then you want to just take a little bit off, little sliver off to give it a bit of ease in there. And the same thing on the other side, we're going in on the quarter, little sliver off here. Turn it around and on the opposite side, we're going up to the fold, cutting off a sliver. And up to the fold and cutting off a sliver. Okay, now we want to cut a sliver on the other side of this tab as well. So we're going to go up to the side, making the sliver off cut like that. So we have a little bit of a sliver. It's not a square shape, it's a sliver shape here. Up to the other fold, turn it around, up to the fold, up to the fold. Now we've got these pieces here. These are going to be our tabs that we're folding under. We've got four of them here. Now on the sides here that do not have the tabs, so if we're holding it here, I'm going to go this side here. This is our tab on here that's pointing upwards. I want to miter this so it's going to meet nicely. So I'm mitering that up to the fold. Mitering that up to the fold. Up to the fold. And up to the fold. And we have a piece that looks exactly like that. When you see my pattern pieces that have got the crosses off, that's the piece that we've cut away. So it doesn't have to be exact. It's just got to be on a miter to make it look nice. Now we're going to score, or rather fold on our score that we've made here, which is going to give our quarter inch. We don't want to score them on the tabs or fold them on the tabs. We just want to fold over this piece here all the way around. Okay, so now we're going to assemble this flat. So to assemble it flat, these tabs are going to tuck in along the edges here and give them some support. And it's going to give us a nice square surface on the top if we fold them in and use them to guide our sides on it. So getting our glue, I'm using art glitter glue of course in this little bitty needle top bottle. I'm going to put a little dot and I'm only going up to the score line here because I can use that piece there to give more support to my base. So I'm going to have a little bit on that dot right here. I'm going to fold that in, fold my top up, and get it to stick on the corner there. So our glitter glue will grab fast normally. Pinch that under there. I've already put glue on this corner. I just want to square it up. So I've got a nice square edge there. So I'm using the tabs to do that for me. I'm going to turn it to the other side. I'm going to put glue on the tab just up to the fold. The tab just up to the fold. Just here. I'm going to get that so the camera will take it. Just up to the fold line here on both sides. Same thing, put it down. Glue your side to your tab, squish it in with your bone folder or your pencil, whatever you want to use. 
get that tab stuck. I'm going to use my bone fold to get into this corner this time. Just a second to grab. Okay, now I'm going to fold in my two non mitered sides like that. I've got a little bit of glue here in the corner that's going to be stuck under by this. You can see that my glue hasn't wanted to grab here for me, but we'll fix that in a second. And it'll all come together nice and neat. So I want to put in my two square ones and glue my two mitered pieces down to them. Square it all up, give it a second to grab. Give away the extra. I'm going to put my bone folder in here. Give it some pressure the other way. And now if we were to look at this from the side, it looks like it's a quarter inch wide piece of paper that could be painted wood, but it's not, it's just cardstock. And there's not totally square, that's okay, we'll put that towards the back. Let's see if I can get that stuck a bit better. Okay, and that's our one. Our next base, we're doing exactly the same thing. The base is a bit bigger because at the back of a birdhouse you have it so it'll sit on a fence like that. So your roof is even with the back part of the base of your birdhouse. So these ones are even. I've got this out to make it even as well, but it's not going to be stepped the same way at the front as it is at the back. Okay, so the difference, that's why this one isn't square. That's what I'm trying to say. So the piece that you've cut that is seven inches by seven, sorry, seven inches by six and a half inches. We're going to do the same thing on our scoreboard. We're going to take this piece, and I've already done it. And I'm going to score it here at half an inch, three quarters of an inch, spin it. Half an inch, three quarters of an inch, spin it. Half an inch, three quarters of an inch, spin it. And half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to do the same folds on it that I did on the first one so I can tell where to cut it to. Sharpen these up. Remember when you score it, the score that you're indenting the paper, that's your top side of the paper that you're bending away. You're putting a little valley, little divot in the front of your, your cardstock. And that is actually stretching the fibers to go down into a little valley so that when you turn them up, they're already stretched to make your point. A lot of people don't understand that if you score it from the front, you fold it upwards. No, the little valley that you're making is actually stretching the fibers so they can go around nicely without breaking. So you make your valleys into mountains. So we're going to do the cuts up to the first line. Again, you're doing straight on the straight side. Up here, I can straighten that. Then you're going to put a little bit of an angle. Straight up, a little bit of an angle. Straight up, then a little bit of an angle. Straight up, and a little bit of an angle. And the size that you haven't cut these tabs down, you're going to miter them. Again, it doesn't matter. Just long they're going to be hidden. Miter it, miter it, miter it. Then we're going to assemble it exactly the same way. We're going to put glue just on this part up to the fold. And then we can bend this piece in if it wants to. 
and it can support the base as we're putting pressure on it. So a little bit of glue on that. It's art glitter glue, so I really should do a less is more principle. And get it to stick quicker. And tuck the tab in, square it up, and make a nice square side. Stick my bone folder in there, my scissor points in there, my fingers if they were smaller. And just get that to grab to make a nice square side. My bone folder down there. Same on the other side. Tuck our tabs in. And glue our tabs to the straight edge. Square it up nice. You want to have nice sharp corners so it looks like it could have been wood. Quarter inch piece of wood. I was of course asked if these could go outside. And yes, they are only paper, but if you did put on a really good outside varnish and made sure you covered everything, there's no reason it couldn't go outside. Based the rain in Canada, the snow that we have in April. So, I haven't glued those down. And what I'm saying about using these tabs as support, the part that we haven't glued, you can fold that in. And it will support this edge as we're gluing it. And that's why I've left them long. You can cut them short because we're not gluing them, but I've left them there just as a little bit of extra support as we're gluing this piece down. So you tuck your straight edges in. You're going to put glue on where your miter is, or you can put glue on your mitered piece. I like just doing it this way. It's art glitter glue. It's not going to show. I'm going to do all four of them at once. And then I'm going to just glue my mitered edges down to my straight edges. Stick my glue, my bone folder in there. Under pressure. Wait till it grabs. And I have another piece just like that. A little bit of extra glue on it. Okay. This piece that I put a little bit dent on, I want to put a little dent towards the back so it's not as obvious. And I'm going to put glue on this top piece. Now we want to have a nice surface for when we look at it this way and this way. So we're going to line it up here and we'll have the same ledge on three sides and we're going to square it up at the back. So we're just going to run a glue line along all four sides. Like that. And we're just going to eyeball it and glue it up so we've got even on three or even on one side stepped out on the other three. Just like that. And now just to close up the bottom and make it look nice, we're going to take our piece that we cut at five and sixteenth inches by 4 and, 15, 6, 4 and 15 sixteenths. These numbers will all be in the beginning of the video. But this one is 5 and 7 sixteenths and 5 and, or sorry, 4 and 15 sixteenths. I'm just going to scribble in a little bit here. And just glue that onto the bottom there. We've cut it a little bit thinner than the bottom on all the sides. So just center it up so we get a nice finish on our bottom. And there we go. We have the bottom of the birdhouse done. Looking up like 
blue. Okay, so that is our birdhouse pieces that we used our seven inches by six and a half inches for the bottom base here. We covered it with the base cover, which is five and seven sixteenths, four and fifteen sixteenths, and this top piece is cut at six inches by six inches. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the main part of our birdhouse. I'm sure everybody's with me so far. We're going to do the easy part of the birdhouse first. So we are going to do the birdhouse sides. And we've got two pieces that we have cut to four and a half inches by six and one eighth inches. Okay, four and a half inches by sixteenth of an inches. I'm doing it in cream. Creamy rose color on this one here. Put these aside for a second. Put this aside. And on these ones, I like putting the pencil mark that I've done or Taylor's done on the way on the downside, so they're gonna be on the inside of the birdhouse. I don't have to erase them, they're just gonna disappear. So seeing as we're folding downwards on our score piece, because we're turning our little valleys that we're making with the score tool into a mountain. We don't have to worry about our pencil pieces. And we're going to score this all the way around again on half an inch, and three quarters of an inch. We're going to spin it half an inch, three quarters of an inch, half an inch, quarters of an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to do the other one while I'm here. Doesn't matter which side I start on, all of them I'm doing half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Our last side, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Okay, with our sides facing this way, okay, long ways across, we are going to fold. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. First, we're going to fold these all the way up so we know where we're cutting them to. Fold them to the innermost corners. And this is going to be the actual side of our birdhouse. I'm using Recollections cardstock, 110 pound. I am getting a little bit of fraying there. It's not bad. Okay, so with it facing, this way here. This is the side we're going to cut our tabs into. So going straight up to the fold and then I'm cutting a sliver off on my tab. Same thing on the other side, straight up to the fold. A little sliver off up to the tab. I don't cut them exactly, I just leave a little bit of paper that I can just pull aside. Turn it around so you're doing the yeah, same on the other side. Cutting straight up to the fold. Cutting a little sliver off the tab. Cutting a sliver off so the weight, the width of the paper isn't going to affect our nice clean fold line. And that one's better there. A little sliver off of this one here. Okay. On the sides that we haven't just cut the tabs into. Sorry, we're going to, on the tabs, on the other side, we're going to cut the little sliver. Just one of them. Little sliver away. Little sliver. You see, they're not square. They've got, they're mitered on both sides. I 
on the side that we haven't cut the tabs, we're going to miter these ones up to the place where we've cut the other ones and take away pieces that look like that. And then we're going to fold on the other score lines. And this one I am getting quite a bit of the fraying at the edges, but I can seal that up using a matte sealer when I'm finished. Just glue them down a little bit better, but it's a decorative piece. I can cover it with all sorts of the flowers that we're going to add. Okay, so we're going to assemble this exactly like we did the base piece. We're going to put glue just up to the fold. On this tab and this tab, a little bit of glue just from here to the fold. I'm getting an awful lot of flashback there. Get down, square it up. I'll use my bone folder to get in there, the corner. Square it up. If I didn't know this was our glitter glue, I'd be surprised that it's not grabbing much quicker. It's not wanting to grab. I wonder if this froze. Doesn't seem very sticky. If our glitter glue ever freezes, it no longer is sticky. The emollient adhesive pieces in there have become tied together and they're no longer going to work to stick it together. It's been pretty cold here in my bedroom. I didn't think it was cold enough to freeze my glue. Do the other sides, stick them together. And seeing as I'm having a hard time getting the corners to grab, I'm going to glue down my miters and just glue the whole thing up all in one step. And let my sides support my innards. As long as I have that nice and squared, nice and squared as it was a piece of quarter inch. You can see my fray there. Look carefully. And there I have a little side. I'm just going to let that sit there and grab itself while we do the other one. So again, I've got it facing me with the long wise across. I'm cutting on the straight up to the second fold and I'm cutting off a sliver of the tab and a sliver on the tab. Cutting up to the fold, on the innermost fold, the second fold, mitering it a little bit by cutting a sliver. I'm doing this other little miter now, saving myself a step. On the other long side, I'm cutting up to the second, mitering up to there, straight up to the second fold, 
Mitering it there. Mitering it here. Didn't do my miter cut there. And on the side that I haven't cut my tabs into, I'm going to miter it to the first fold. Okay, you don't want to miter it to the second fold, you want to miter it to the first fold. That's why we folded the first one, so you got the idea. This one I'm skipping a step just to make it quicker. Bend that a little bit better to the fold. There. And again, I'm going to fold the scores on the innermost ones. Glue shape maybe it'll work better. And folding our second ones. Hopefully everybody's with me so far. Okay, now we're ready to do the same thing. We're going to add glue. I have another little glue bottle. I'm going to switch out glue bottles and see if I have a better time with this bottle. Same stuff, art glitter glue, but the other one just doesn't want to play nice today for some reason. I'm going to glue up to the fold. Go up to the fold. own folder in there to see if I can get a better place to grab it. Wow, this art glitter glue is just not sticking today. I'm going to use my bone folder here and push it on the side. There we go. That's better. I didn't fold this one over. Yes, I did. A little bit of glue just up to the fold. I'm going to fold this on my tabletop this time to give myself more pressure for folding this. It just doesn't make it easy for you guys to see. Holding my tabs in and then again while it's sticking itself up drying up I'm going to tuck my square ones in I'm going to put glue on the corners that will be covered by my miter on all four sides It'll be a bit sloppy here because first of all it's going to dry mat and second of all it's going to be on the inside of your birdhouse so you're not going to be able to see it And the paper birds won't care. There we go. Two sides. And we'll seal up my glue bottle. Now, this is the only tricky part of the make, and I'm going to walk you through it very carefully, and I know you're going to be able to do it just fine. I practiced on Taylor. Taylor had to make the whole thing from scratch. So I've got little cards here to walk you through all of the scoring that we're going to do. This is Taylor's. 
As I said, my husband is a total non-paper crafter, non-crafty person at all. If I could teach him to do this, I can teach you guys. So I don't want anyone saying, oh, that's too hard, because it's not. So we have two pieces of our cardstock here. I'm using cream colored, like I said. And we want to cut both these pieces to eight and a half by six and a half. Okay, those cutting measurements will be at the beginning of the video again. So eight and a half by six and a half. Now taking one of these, and this can be your back, so if you make a mess of it, it doesn't matter, it's going to be the back of the birdhouse. So taking one of these pieces and your score tool or your pencil and ruler, whichever you have to use, hopefully you've got a scoreboard, you are going to mark or score your paper rather at, where's my little piece that had all this written down, there it is. You're going to score your paper at, with it here, long wise as if you're going to write a letter. We're marking it, scoring it at one inch. One and five eighths inches. Three and a quarter, which is your center mark. That'll make a difference later. Four and seven eighths. Five and a half. Okay. You can do this on a scrap piece of paper if you don't feel secure about it first. You're basically making a pattern to cut out the other pieces. So you can use this and have the little extra score marks across the back of your board. Or you can use a piece of scrap paper. It's up to you. I'm going to make the marks in the back of this and put it at the back of my house. So then I'm going to turn it this way. Sideways landscape model. And I'm going to score it at three quarters of an inch. Three and a quarter, four inches, five and three quarters, seven and a half, and seven and three quarters. Okay, going over that again, we're at one inch. One and five eighths, three and a quarter, seven and, or sorry, four and seven eighths, five and a half. And in landscape, then you're then scoring it three and a quarter, sorry, three quarters, one and a quarter, four inches, five and three quarters, seven and a half, and seven and three quarters. Okay, you're going to have a piece of paper that looks like this. I have marked in my score marks so you can see them. You're just going to have score marks. Okay, and I said if you want to use an extra piece of scrap paper and do your pattern for this first, that's fine. I'm just going ahead and using it with this. Now, on this piece of paper that you've scored up so nicely, we're going to play a game of Battleship. Just like we did when we were kids. Remember you had the grid line and you'd draw on your little boats that were like four across and, you know, one by twos and all that. And then you'd say C1, C2, and you'd sink each other's battleships. Well, we're doing the same game here. With the paper in our writing mode, portrait mode, we are going to mark these lines. First score is A. Second score is B. C for the center, D, and E. And then we're going to mark our score lines going downwards. Would help if I'd done that the right way. Oh, I'm missing one. No, I'm not. There are extra ones that Taylor put on there. <laughs> this first line is one. This one is two. This one is three. This one is four. This one is five. This one is six, okay? Going across the top, it's A, B, C, D, E. Going down, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And you basically have 
a one that looks like this without my score lines marked on it here. You've got your A, B, and C. So I want you to mark across here at C1, which is going to be right up here. Mark a little cross there with your pencil. Then on A2, which is down here, and at E2, mark a little X there. Now on B5, mark an X. And on D5, mark an X. You now have five X's on this piece. Now I want you to connect your, your cuts right off the page with your ruler. So I'm lining up my two squares here and I'm going right off the page. And I'm lining up this one here and this one here, going right off my page. This one here and this one here is right in the score line, but let's mark it anyway. Right off my page. Terrible shadow here. And I'm marking this one to this one. Right off my page. And this one to this one. Right off my page. That mark better off my page. Let's give that one more try. There. And you are going to have a birdhouse shape like this. That is going to be the inner line of our birdhouse. And now we have to square it up and add a quarter of an inch all the way around, around the outside. So to do this, we are going to take our scoreboard back, it's easiest, and first we are going to score along these lines that we've just made. And this is where having these marker lines, and all I've done is I've taken a marker and run it down inside the little groove of my scoreboard to mark them off into inches and half inches. And this is why I do this, is now I can take my pencil mark that I've done here line my pencil mark up to the marks that I've made in the groove. It's very hard to trace these if they're not marked from what's straight here to what's straight there. But if you've got them already marked, I'm going to mark this pencil mark up with this black, and I'm going to score along there. And while I'm here, I'm now going to go half an inch out, so two niches out, and I'm going to mark it and now I'm going to go half inch out, one, two, three, four niches, and I'm going to mark it right off my page now, okay? And then I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to line up the next pencil mark I've made from off the page to off the page, and I'm going to score along. Now, optically, it looks like you're not following a straight line, but you are because you're going in the groove of your score, your score pal or your score board. Okay, then I'm going over half an inch, so two notches on my scoreboard, or I'm marking it half an inch, or a quarter of an inch with my ruler, and then half an inch after that. So one, two, three, four. Here's my half inch mark. And I go right off my paper. And I turn it around. This one here is going to be on the square. Get up here to make sure I'm still square. There you go. I've already marked my quarter inch one, and I'm not going to mark the half inch one on this one here. I'm going to let it go that little bit of extra to have a little bit of extra support down here on this piece. Okay, but following along, turn the paper, marking along my pencil mark to my pencil mark. And I'm going over two bumps. First, I'm scoring on my pencil mark. And then I'm going over two bumps from my pencil mark, marking a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going over one, two, three, four from that. And I'm marking that one. 
Now one more side, mark up my pencil lines, pencil lines to my marked lines. I'm scoring along the fold. So I've made with my pencil going a quarter inch over and a half inch over. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I've done all these score lines on here. And what I basically have now is this. This is so you can see all the score lines that I put on here. If you've done it with a ruler, you've marked your quarter inch. So your quarter inch. And then a half inch from that or a quarter inch and three quarter inches all the way around. Same as you had on the other ones, you've always got a half inch and a quarter inch and then your actual shape. Okay, so you now have this. So now that you have this, cut out along the outside line that you have here. I'm going to use my little cutter here because it's quicker. I'm going to line up my scores. This one quicker. First is quickest. I'm going to cut off corner here. Again, if you don't feel good cutting into your actual paper doing this, do it on your pattern piece first and then use this as a pattern. Leaving the bottom one, cutting down the other side of my house here. Lining up my score mark with my score mark. And I now have this. And hopefully you do too. So now we're going to make the notches in this to square it up and we're going to use the one that we've cut up as our pattern. And I do have extra score marks in here from when I did it, but I don't really care. It's the back of my house or I could have done it with my pattern piece and then just use the pattern piece to make myself two new bright and shiny card pieces. So on this piece here, we're going to go along the bottom of our house here and we are going to cut right up to this fold here and right up to our X and on the other side we're cutting up to our X on the roof side we've got the point facing down us down here we are cutting right up to our X on that first mark and right up to our X on that mark then we are going to miter this in a little bit. We're cutting right up to the same line. You can see your X is on a score line. You want to fold on this score line you've got across here. You don't want to fold down here on the diagonal. You want to go across here so you can make yourself a little mark. Tick mark across here. And tick mark across here, although it's almost on the straight. To tell yourself not to go past that line. So now we're going to cut down to that first line on our score line to our first score line, not to our second, to our first. And same thing here. Now another way I can do this if you want to make sure you're getting it right is I can tell you above your X, I'm going to mark a little tab and you can mark a little circle up there. Put a little check mark. You need this tab. You need this tab. You need this one here. You need this one here. You need this one here. Just to tell you not to cut away that piece. Okay, so for our sides now, we've cut this piece down here and we want to fold it on the square, on this for original fold line number two. Same thing with this one. Let's fold it out of the way so you know you've got it straight. On this one here, we're going to cut along the fold line only to the, school, the fold line 
that you made originally. You're not going to go to your pencil line, you're going to go to your fold line. Fold that back. Same thing here, you're cutting across here, not to your pencil line, to your fold line. And you're going to fold that back so it's square. And you have that. It's the same as I've got here. Fold that back, fold that back, fold that back, fold that back. Okay? Same thing I've got there. Now my top. I've put a little tick right here that tells me I want to keep this tab and this piece is going to go away. So up here, I'm going to cut on this side along my pencil line down to my check mark or my cross that I made. And then I'm going to cut my tab down to the pencil line on this one. And then I'm going to cut the piece out that's right here along my pencil line because we don't need that. Okay. And we have this. This is your pattern that you're going to need for doing your front piece. So you can use this now and you can get your other piece that you've got here. And you can just trace around this piece here. If you've used a scrap piece, you can make as many as you want to after this. Let's keep our tabs tucked in here. Fold in our top tab. Just line up our paper. Let's not do it on the scoreboard. We'll get with the squips. So on our good piece, it's going to face the front. Line up our bottom carefully. And just use our pencil and let's trace around. And down in where my tab is going to be. And where my tab is, and my bottom. Okay, so I have a tracing that looks like that. Now, I don't want to cut away my tabs, so let's connect that line up here. Let's connect it here. Connect it back here, so we're going to have the same house shape on the outside. And on this piece here, we're going to connect it back up here. I'm just going to sketch that in. Okay, the other thing you need for this one here, I'm going to make a tiny little mark here. On my, if I was playing Battleship, I'm going to be doing it on C3, which is right here in the center of my thing. And I'm doing it on C4, which is right here. This one's going to be the hole for the front of the birdhouse. I'm not going to have it on the back, obviously. This is going to be the hole for the bird perch, obviously not on the back. But I could make a little mark in my pattern or in my actual bird stock card stock for the birdhouse and just mark it for myself for the front. So go in there, make a little pencil mark, make sure it transfers. Yes it did. And right there. Make a little mark for myself. Didn't show up. Okay, so I've got my two marks for my front here. Now we want to make the same lines on the front one that we did on the other. We want to check off a little X mark was here. At this point, we had a little X mark at this point, little X mark at this point, little X mark at this point, little X mark at this point. You're going to need to erase this, so try and do it nice and gently. And just give yourself a guideline.
for where you're going to score. At that point, this point, go off the page, and this point. And now you're going to want to score those marks and while you've got it on your scoreboard or you can use your ruler. If you're just using a ruler and pencil, you're going to mark that at a quarter inch and a quarter inch quarter inch and go all the way across here quarter inch and a quarter inch And then I would be marking those and I would be scoring them with my pencil, making my scores if I didn't have a scoreboard. I do have a scoreboard. So going back to my scoreboard, I'm going to line up these pencil lines I've done on the lines I've made on my scoreboard here. And I'm going to score on this line, score my quarter of an inch in, and my half inch in. I'm going to turn it. Mark up my pencil lines, score along my pencil line, score half an inch over, and score a half inch over from that so three quarters of an inch over mark up my pencil lines and i'm going to score on my pencil line i'm going to score half an inch over which will line up with my tab marks i'm going to leave that piece a little bit extra long Mark up my pencil lines, scroll along the pencil line, right off my page, quarter of inch over, along my next pencil line that I did my outsides on, which of course is half an inch over from that, three quarters of an inch from my main shape. And for the last side, line up my pencil line. quarter inch which is going to line up with my tab and my half inch over which is going to line up with my outside and now I have the same pattern but I don't have the marks on the inside you can't really see the folds there but they're there and I've got my little line here this is going to be my bird hole and this is going to be a one inch hole that this is the center of this little mark I made and this one here is going to be a quarter of an inch for my perch. And I'm just going to, well, I can cut them out by hand, but I have never leave well enough alone, as you all know me. So I've taken a little die that happens to have a one inch center. Lost the die. Little non-branded die. It's a little doily, and it has a one inch hole in the center. So I've decided to put a decorative edge around this particular birdhouse. So I'm just going to line that up there. I've cut out the center of it. It didn't cut out with the doily. So I just cut it out myself. 
just going to put the pattern there, eyeball it that it's straight down there, and I'm going to draw myself a little circle. You can use a compass, you can use a die, you can use whatever you've got that's about an inch. Make the mark there. Okay. So now we're going to make this piece, this is our front piece, match the back piece. Scoreboard aside, there's my scoring tool in it. And once again, we are going to mark. First of all, we're going to cut out our house. So I'm going to use the scissors. Show you it's easy enough for scissors. And along this score mark, along this score mark, nothing magic looks exactly like the first one. It just doesn't have your sensor score marks down in here. But you needed them for positioning these and for making your battleship game. Okay, so now that we have those, let's bend the tabs back on our first one to remind ourselves where they are. There they are. And let's mark, remember, we're going to the pencil line here. That's very easy to do now because we haven't marked it all the way over to the original score. We're going down to the first score and then only down to where our pencil line stops on this tab. This one here we're going down to the pencil line both places. This one here we're going all the way to the pencil line and then only down to where our pencil line stops here. We're not going all the way down to that bolt. So on these ones that we've cut here and they haven't gone the whole way, let's bend those down out of the way making sure they're square like our original sketch is that we use as a pattern. That, like that. These aren't pre-folded, but it'll be soft enough that you should be able to do it no problem. Folding these in place. And this top piece right here, we're just going to cut out this top bit right here. There we go. Now using the first one that's got all the extra score marks, so if you make any mistakes, this will be your back. I'm going to take my eraser, just because I like to neaten things up, and I'm going to erase my pencil marks that I started off with. I just don't want my pencil marks to show on my side pieces. So yes, I did make a pattern for mine, because I don't like having extra scar marks. I don't like having extra markings on it, but that's me. I designed it so I get to do it twice or three times to show you guys once. So everything I make, I get to do at least three or four or five times just so I have a video for you guys. <laughs> okay, so I've erased my pencil marks there. I'm going to score, or rather I'm going to fold on that first line, leaving my tabs out. Score on this one. Fold this one out. Go on this one, fold on that one. Sorry, I keep confusing those two. Fold on this score mark, pull it back out, fold on this score mark. These are our inner score marks that make our original house size, which is that. Okay, now we're going to go and we're going to fold it over on our second score marks. All the way around. Ignore the extra scores you've got in there that you did do, made to do your pattern. If you've chosen to make a pattern piece for it, great. You can make as many as you want now and never have to make another pattern piece. Just score around and make as many as you want the easy way. I could have done 
uh, pattern for you that you could have printed on the printer, but then you would have needed a printer. And I said no extra equipment because a lot of us are stuck in with the COVID things. We may not have access to a printer. We may not have paper. We may not have toner. So I've done it so that absolutely anybody in the whole world can make one of these, which is paper, glue, and scissors. Okay. I'm also going to erase my two little square marks here. And we're going to glue this together to make the other part of our birdhouse. Starting at the top point, folding in that piece, we're getting our glue. We'll do the same thing. We're just going to put glue up to the little square there. We're going to fold that in. And get it to stick to the other side. Now to get this to stick easier, we can just stick this down in one step. So let's glue our little tab and glue our little space there. You are going to have a tiny little bit extra that sticks out here where it's not mitered the same way, right there, after you glue it. We've left those there for you to trim now. Just gonna get your scissors, just trim along that using the back as a guide, neaten it up. Okay, we're just going to glue these pieces together now so our tabs don't give us so much trouble. Just make sure you're keeping it square. I swear this art glitter glue had to have frozen. I do admit that I had my room very cold last night. Being a proper Canadian, we do like to have some very cold nights to sleep in. Last night was one of the last ones of the year, hopefully, that we'll have. So I had all my windows wide open and a nice north breeze blowing. So it could have been good for me and detrimental for my glue. So on our sides of our house, we're going to put glue on the tabs, glue on the tabs, and we're going to put glue on this piece here. Now this is not going to have a great deal amount of room to stick to right here. You can reinforce it later if you want to. I'm just going to work with it as it is. I could have done another pattern piece for you that you would have had to adapt with, but I thought it would be simpler if I just did it like this. Take the extra glue off, square it up in the center. The tab here is going to need to be manipulated a little bit to give you your square piece. Just sort of stick it out there with your bone folder whatever you have to do to get that straight. It's going to be hidden under the ring, the wing of your roof, so it's not too critical. And this extra little piece that's sticking out here, we're just going to trim that off nice and neat. I guess I could have used some score tape here, but I said no extra stuff. This one here again, the little tab you've got stuck there is going to give you a little bit of oomph underneath your pieces that you're sticking down. As long as you get them square enough. Just keep squaring things up as the glue sets. Trim that piece off. And our bottom one's easiest. Fold those in. We'll put glue on this one here. I know it's hard to see what I'm doing, but you guys can imagine what I'm doing, folding the tabs in, folding the pieces together. This is why I left that little bit of extra room right there. This is what our house is going to sit on. So I've just left it a little bit longer here, an extra quarter of an inch. Give that a second to set up. Make sure we've got everything square on this side, which it wasn't, so I'm glad I turned it over.
I've got extra glue here it doesn't want to grab. Just give that a second grab. Now my original idea when I designed this house was to use some fancy scrapbook paper. This is just cardstock. Was to use some fancy scrapbook paper and line it all with fancy scrapbook paper. And just like mat it with fancy scrapbook paper, pattern scrapbook paper. And I'll do another one to show you an example of that on one of the other ones. Um, I'm going to do orchid paper flowers to go on this one to match the orchids that you saw the original picture on. I'm going to do, I don't think, I think roses, forget-me-nots, things like that on this one. So I'll be showing you a video that shows you how to make roses and forget-me-nots. And again, if you wanted to make um, scrapbook paper mats along it, you just want to come in an eighth of an inch on all the four sides of the patterns that you've made, all the sizes that you've made. So you'd be an eighth of an inch in on all these squares, an eighth of an inch on these ones and just make it with decorative paper. I left them blank so I could cover them with flowers of whatever color I chose. But my original intent was to do a black or a white background and cover it with pattern paper. And I'm just going to neaten this up by trimming this piece a little bit better than that. Trimming this piece like that. And there's my back. And before we do the front, we have to make these two holes. So I have trimmed those, or scored them out, sorry, penciled them out. And I could use a die machine and a die if I happen to have one handy or wanted to use it, but I'm just going to cut this out with pencil. Sorry, with scissors. Because I cut my pencil mark out with scissors. I think it must be late here. It's what 11:30, but I promise this will be up today. So, internet was down part of the day, so it's just a little bit. I'm doing it on Thursday, folks. I'm doing it on Thursday. So I'm just going to cut out my. Taylor's laughing at me. I'm always the last minute. And that's not the most perfect circle in the world, but in my case, I'm going to cover it with this little fancy thing here. So it's going to be fine because I could be neatening it up a little bit. I'm just erasing the pencil mark that shows. The smaller one I'm just going to poke a hole in and then I'm just going to cut a little star shape out of it so I can bend the little pieces back when I do my piece of paper that goes in there. Just going to make little square marks so I can poke a roll of paper in there later and it'll be sort of roundish and erase my pencil. And I want to neaten up by erasing my pencil marks around the edges of the folds here because we've now scored along them we know where they are. go. The rubber things. Okay. We're going to fold along our scores. One and two all the way around. You hearing what I'm hearing, Taylor? Mm -hmm. Yes. And here and here, I think we might have some newborn kittens being born. For those of you that don't know, Taylor and I breed Himalayan kittens. 
from our own bloodlines. We used to be a registered breeder, but now we just sort of do it as a hobby, a few litters a year. The newborns have a very distinctive cry when they're first born. So it sounds like because I have to film a video, someone has to have a baby instead. But Taylor's a very adept midwife nowadays, so. Okay, folded those all the way around. And we're going to stick this one together just like we stuck the back part of it together. Take off my extra little pencil marks here just to neaten it up. Okay, starting at my sides here, I'm going to fold this down here, fold this down here. Actually, I'm going to start at the very rooftop here. And I'm going to fold this tab in, put some glue on it, fold the tab over here. And glue in here and fold that down. Pick it up, square it up here. I will have a bit that hangs out over here that I'll have to trim. Just gonna hold that for a minute to get a chance to glue to dry. And trim off this extra little bit here up to my point. And on the sides, I'm going to tuck these folds in under here with a little bit of glue. A little bit of glue. Tuck them under and in. Now I'm going to add glue right here. I'll square it up and hold it while it grabs. When you've got the tab underneath, if you've got the tab exactly where your finger is pressing the glue, you can feel that that little tab that's glued upwards here and then outwards is now giving you a surface that you can press down against with your tabs. That's why I left them long. If you're using score tape, you only get one chance to get it right, but on the other hand, it, once it's stuck, it's stuck. So, but again, special equipment. I said there wasn't any. Scoring that up. I'm trimming that neatly. Scoring that up. Trimming that neatly. And the bottom pieces. Add a bit of glue. A bit of glue. Lots of glue. Lots of glue. Fold my tabs up and in. These tabs up and on. Make sure everything's square on this side. And I'm just going to hold it for a second. And bore you guys while you watch the glue dry. I speed along so <laughs> you guys don't have to do boring things like watch the glue dry. Trust me, when I make these things the first time, or I make them for myself, not on video, it takes me much longer. But my videos, I try to do it in a rush, so the videos aren't terribly, terribly long and boring. I'm normally very precise, very picky. Let's trim that square. Trim that square. 
from that square -er. I'll stick this piece down again because it didn't want to stick. while I'm waiting for the glue to dry, I'm just going to add some glue to my little doily thing here and stick that down while I can. Little drips of glue here and there. It's not going to go anywhere. As I said, this is an optional thing. If you wanted to do this, I just use a two and a half inch square of my paper. And it was basically because I needed a one inch thing and I found this is a one inch circle in my dies that I'm using for another project and thought, ah, that would look nice. So there, I'm going to glue that in place right there. I can barely see it, the tone on tone. Shows it better in person, honest. So just give me a sharper line for making my circle look a little bit better. Okay, in my pattern pieces, I have a little tiny strip like this that says birdhouse inner hole. And it's a quarter of an inch thick, like all of the edges are. And piece here I've got is four and a half inches around type of thing. I am going to just wrap this around my glue bottle just to get it roundish. If I want the paper to be coerced more into a circle, I can take the end of my scissors. I can scrape them against my scissor edge like that. And I want to fit this in to my little birdhouse circle here like that. And I want to see where it overlaps and cut off the extra. My piece isn't even square. it back in the circle here and I'm going to make that the right size to fill that circle. Just pull it out with the glue so it's going to fit in that circle piece nice and tightly. I said my piece isn't even cut properly. And then while I'm here and I'm waiting for my glue to dry, I'm just going to run a bit of glue, running out of glue here, shake bill please, I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to run a bead of glue along my very ragged scissor edge, where I totally butchered this circle. But you're not going to be able to see that because I'm going to put this piece of paper in there. Just putting glue all around the outside there. And now I'm just going to push my circle through. Like that. Let's 
match it up on this side. Run a bit of extra glue around here just to give the glue something to stick to. It can stick to itself. Double check it from the other side. This just gets the illusion of the birdhouse being an eighth of an inch thick if you're looking at the hole. Otherwise, we just have a paper thin hole and it destroys the illusion of the fact that it's all done with quarter inch wood. So there, I'll just put that in there. Okay, so let's glue our birdhouse together and then we're going to build the roof tiles. This is already a very long video. Okay, I'm going to come back with a second video on your roof tiles and gluing, assembling, gluing your roof tiles and then another one that we'll make the flowers with. So I will see you in the next video. This is Catlin. I hope you're doing well for this point. Um, get one done. Watch on the next video. Okay. See you in part two.